in case you are unaware, this is the headline right now. It's that our average price has exceeded $1 million. This is the first time in history Toronto has been this expensive. That's the whole greater Toronto area. We're going to go over the important numbers. We'll look at the average price. Is it a seller's market? Is it a buyer's market? My predictions are for the rest of 2021. Then I'll share with you the areas where it's best to buy and the areas where it's best to sell. If you're short of time, then great news. The YouTube description box has timestamps just for you. As shown here in the five-year historical average price, back in 2016, it was at $724,000. And 2017, although prices were sky high, specifically for freehold property, the average price was only at $805,000. But the difference is, is that now it's the condos which are really bringing up our average price as back in 2017 it was a lot of the detached homes and semi-detached homes that were selling at very high prices in the beginning of the year the average condo like the average one bedroom was still hovering somewhere around uh, 350 to 400,000, whereas now you're looking at paying 500 to 550 in 2018 for the first time our average price actually decreased over the past decade of course because in 2017 new rules were introduced and the foreign tax was implemented. So we saw that average price drop to $783,000 in 2019. Definitely more of a healthier market, more transactions without question. The average price came up to 815,000. And then in 2020, look at that, the average price went up to 915,000. And all these numbers were taken in December. So the final month of each year. And we anticipated at the end of 2020 that the average price would likely increase over a million dollars. And now it's finally happened. It can say it definitely happened um, sooner than we anticipated. I was expecting it to maybe hit a million dollars around the summertime, but it's happened now. Specifically, our average price is $1,045,488, whereas back in January 2021, the average price was $967,000. So that's an 8% increase in the average price only from January to February. Looking at the past 12 months, the average price has increased by 14.9%. Here's the difference though. As you'd expect in the Toronto core, the average price is higher. The average detached home in Toronto sold for $1,684,000 in February, 2020. Whereas in the 905, the average detached home sold for 1,300,000. Otherwise though, the major headline is the fact that there were 64% more condo sales in February, 2021 versus February, 2020. And if you remember February, 2020, just prior to the pandemic, there was a shortage of condo every condo that was coming on the market or almost every condo was selling over their asking price with a bidding war in less than a week. It was very hard for buyers to find condos, whereas now we're looking at having more of a supply and buyers are definitely more comfortable getting into the condo market now that the rules have relaxed to some extent. So we have this accumulation of new listings that were put on the market during the second half of 2020. And now those listings are on the market and there's new listings coming up. So buyers have a lot of selection. Thus, we have 64 four percent more sales and there was specifically 3116 sales in february 2021 with the condo market whereas last year in february 2020 there was only 1906 looking at the average price change over the past 12 months detached homes have gone up by 23 percent up to one million three hundred seventy one thousand dollars semi-detached homes actually have an average price over a million dollars. This is the first time in history in the greater Toronto area. They increased by 20.3%. Now they're up to $1,050,000. Townhouses similarly are up quite significantly, up by 17.3% to $858,000. And then similar to some of the prior months, the condo market is still down compared to what it was 12 months ago. It's down by 3.7% at $642,000. So based on this information, as well as what I'm seeing in the marketplace is that it's definitely a seller's market, meaning it's more advantageous to sell your property versus buy with very few exceptions, such as like the condo market or maybe high end areas that are selling along with land. They seem to be somewhat decreased in value. So perhaps there, one can make the argument that it could potentially be a buyer's market. And if you were to ask me what my personal predictions are for the remainder of the year, I am expecting prices to increase, yet I'm not expecting them to increase at the same velocity. I'm expecting like slight price growth in the next couple of months. Maybe March should end up being like three to 5% of a price increase. I will though break it down to 
condos versus everything else because the condo market is just completely different and one always has to keep in mind that this is going to affect our average price. So with the condo market, I'm going to expect it to increase in value throughout the whole year. I would expect like a six to eight percent increase from now until December. And with the housing market, so excluding condos, what I'm expecting is slight price growth over the next couple months. I'm expecting it to be a traditional real estate market like we experienced from 2012 to 2016 where there's a little bit of price growth in the spring and a little bit of price growth in the fall but the summer months are relatively slow in terms of the number of sales and the average price usually creeps down just a little bit so i'd say with the housing market a three to five percent increase in the average price in march and in april and then from may to august i'm not expecting any increase and then in september and october i'm expecting the average price to go up again by 3.5 percent each month of course 2020 was a very abnormal market it definitely wasn't like the traditional real estate cycle that we're accustomed to in the first quarter there were more sales and the second quarter that's when the pandemic really hit us and there was a decreased number of sales and this really uh, postponed a lot of uh, people's plans to purchase as shown by the increase in quarter three and then in quarter four so what happened was usually it's the second quarter where we see the highest number of sales as shown by the white bar here in quarter two and that's specifically because most buyers want to buy in the spring move in the summertime and then get the kids off to school for september however they couldn't really do that last year of course the pandemic postponed their plans like i mentioned and they bought later in the year and i have also noticed one interesting thing is that there's a very high percentage of people who are elder and had plans to downsize in 2020 but they still want to wait until the pandemic is over and it makes sense if you're elder you have to be especially mindful of covid plus it's obviously not a great idea for them to be going out and looking at property at this time. And if you were to ask which areas of the GTA are the hottest, Toronto itself, the data is kind of skewed because of the fact that there are so many downtown condos that are gonna affect of course, all of our averages, average days on market, our average price. And so looking at the freehold market and specifically detached homes, everything in Scarborough is on fire right now. The average detached home in the east area of Toronto is selling for $1,234,000 at 106% of its asking price in only 15 days on the market. Where it's specifically hottest, the average days on market is nine days and property is selling at 114% of its asking price is Toronto E07. And where that is, is between Kennedy and 401 and Markham and Steeles. And then the slowest market for Toronto property would be the downtown condominiums. So in central Toronto right now, the average Toronto condo is selling in 35 days on the market, which is very different than what we were accustomed to, of course, 12 months ago the average days on market was somewhere between 10 to 15 days but in all honesty it was probably only like two days on market or three days on market it's just the fact that it does take an extra week to get all the formalities taken care of like ordering the status certificate and such and then outside of toronto so in the 905 here's a surprise one of the hottest areas looks like new market right now with the average days on market only being 14 days definitely different than what we're accustomed to in the prior months usually in york region the average days on market is somewhere around 20 to 25 so it's 14 days in new market and in ajax only 11 days on market in oshawa only 10 days on market and brampton is actually only 12 days on market and we can see here that uh, pretty much the average property is selling over its asking price so keeping that in mind if you see any property that is on the market for over like three weeks let's say 21 days it's really a great idea to talk to your preferred real estate agent and ask them why is that property not selling because very likely we would know the reason why it's not selling if you're considering buying or selling then do call me i'd love to earn your business my contact information is in the description box below and if you're a ambitious realtor watching this video and you'd like to connect i have no problem sharing some of my business practices do feel free to reach out to me i look forward to speaking to you and I will look forward to seeing you all next time.